Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Today, we're gonna to be working on a journal from start to finish, and I'm gonna be using Anne from Odusina's Digitals. When I saw this digital set, I knew, I knew this was the digital set for me. It, it's absolutely exquisite. The details in this dressmaker kit are unbelievable. So I'm just going to do a quick flip through and show you ladies exactly what's in this kit. She definitely gives you so much for your value. Let me see if we can get this. In. Look at these dresses that I definitely, definitely highly encourage you to go grab it and let's create this together. Look at all these dress shops. And then here is some lace from these dress shops, some samples. I printed a few of these out because I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna display them. Look at this. This is a fussy cut page. Oh, so pretty and so realistic looking. And here's another page. What's well, funny, I don't even know what I did this on, but it kind of looks cool. I don't even know what paper this is. It almost looks like a piece of cardboard. But I like it. I'm going to keep it like that. That was a mistake. And then it's another one. I didn't do anything on the backs of these because I'm not quite sure what I was going to do. I thought of taking out some coffee and seeing if I could just kind of coffee stain this a little bit and do a little test. So maybe that'll be our first video together is trying to see if we can coffee stain some of these. I didn't do anything on the back of this either. See, you don't really have to either because you want to leave space too for people to be able to journal on. Oh, I, you know what this is? This is a print that I did. I wanted to show you guys. This is a print I did from my laser printer. And this is a print. Let me find the one that's exactly the same. And this is the one I did from my Epson, the EcoTank. Look how much better it does with the EcoTank than it does on the laser printer. I, I'm astounded because a laser printer usually does amazing quality. Unless my laser printer is getting tired because she is old. But I don't use her much now. I love this Epson. Look at this. This is so cute. And I think I got a little ink on here, but that's not going to matter because we'll be able to cover that up some. I still have to trim the corners down and do a little bit of cutting. But I'm going to go through these quick because I think I showed you these in one of the other videos. So I'm just going to go through them rather quick to show you. And then I'm going to pull out some of my, I have a whole drawer of antique documents and stuff. And I think I'm going to use some of those in this. I always try to wait until I find a very special journal, um, digital that I love to be able to do that. And I absolutely love this. Those of you that know me know that I love flowers. I love flowers and lace. Look at this flowing lace. Oh, they, she just did a wonderful job with these. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to trim these down. And then I think I'm going to come back, jump back on and see if um, we could do a little coffee staining on some of them that don't have anything on the backs. So sit tight. I'll be right back. So guys, this is what I use. And I'll put it in the comments. It's an espresso or espresso. And I just take extremely hot water. I don't boil it. So let's put this in here. Take what you think you need. Just to put a heaping in. And let's pour this in. And 
And we're gonna just try to, see it, it goes in even with extremely hot water. We're just gonna try to do the backs of these a little bit. Maybe I'll do some of the fronts just to make it so it look kind of old. And I'm gonna use this right here. A sponge, let's see how this goes. It's curling up on me a little bit, but that shouldn't matter because we can straighten it out after. Just the backs here. And the pooling you want, because that's what creates the different effects. And I might even take my heat tool and just try to dry it a little bit. I've never done that, but I figured I'll give it a whirl and see. It is warm. And I have my fan on. I have a, um, a split, mini split, which is they're great. It has heat, AC. And now that I have this coffee in here, I actually just purchased a new drying rack. And I might just finish and use up my coffee and do some paper because... I didn't do any this winter and I'm kind of running low and I'd like to use some of the coffee dyed paper in my journal. So let me go finish this up and I'm going to grab my heat tool and see how that works. So I have them all done and I'm going to turn the noise down in the video, but I just kind of want to show you so we can see together how the heat tool works on this. So as you can see, I actually ended up moving the, um, the heat tool around so that way it kind of created that drip look and in some spots it was darker than others. And I held it from the corner because it's very, very hot. And if you're heat sensitive, some people are, you can take some tongs and just hold on to it from the corner as well. And they really, they curled up a little bit, but you could always put it in between book. So I pulled out some paper and I wanted to show you guys the paper that I use. And this is the paper I use in the journal pages. It's a little more expensive, but it creates a beautiful print. And you know, when you're putting so much work into something, you want to get the best. And I put that also in my links for you guys. And this is the thicker one to do the um, tags with. So now what I'm gonna do is I have a few pieces of paper here and I put down my, I have a special pad that I put down and I wanna, I wanted to just touch up this doily. So we'll do that just to give it that look. And I guess my theory worked to use the heat tool. I, uh, I'm i kind of impatient <laughs> when it comes to things. So I'm gonna put this over here and then we're gonna grab another one. And I wanna see if I can do the same thing that I did, but do it with paper. I have a bunch of these. I'm thinking I have a lot of extras. I might put them up on my Ko-Fi page. You want to just kind of position where you want this. I kind of like that, that edge there. So when you do this, I go over it a few times. Normally I dip my paper and then come back and let this pool up in here like this. But we don't have much time, or I don't. I do have time. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just impatient, that's all. And we'll let this sit for a couple of hours, maybe until tonight. 
the pages I'm working on. And then I will um, re-give it, maybe give it another coat. Because it. I like to have it, the darker this is, the darker it shows up. And you'll see that it's kind of cool because it'll create a um, beautiful lace pattern. You want to get those edges. It'll create the pattern that's on here. Uh, these are vintage plastic tablecloths. They're hard to find. I was lucky my mother-in-law had a huge one, and then I got some from someone. And I have, I think, more than I really need. So like I said, I'll go through mine and see what I have and put some up on my Ko-Fi page for you ladies. And I'll see if I can find more because I really like them. I'm lucky because where we live, a lot of these homes are really old and they stay in the family for generations. And then once someone in one of the generations decides that they don't want to keep the house, it has, <laughs> I want to say artifacts, it has stuff in it from, gosh, years and years and years that people just keep accumulating. And then we have a local um, thrift shop because a lot of these places also on the lakes are old camps. And people buy them furnished. And again, there's a lot of old things in them as well. Let me turn, push this down a little bit. So I like to hit the local, there's that one through a church and there's one downtown that I really like. And I haven't gone in a while. So I'm going to have to hit it up and see if they have anything cool. And I like this edging because I can even just cut or rip the edges so we have this. So you guys have get the idea. And I will be back when I have this um, dried for you. And again, I might try to see if I can use the heat tool. Oops, I moved it. Shoot. And that doesn't really matter. You can always just redo it like this. And it takes, when, what happens is, is the magic happens as it's drying, not when it's wet, because I've dipped my pages in um, coffee and um, then laid my tablecloth on top of it. And I cut them, they're all in pieces, these tablecloths, so they fit on paper as well. So I will be back. So I kinda want to show you, excuse the mess. I just ordered this very cool drying rack and you can adjust the shelves, or not the shelves, the hanging things. And I got these clips to clip on. I don't have, I have room in here, but not a lot of, um, a lot of big spaces that I can put this up. I could always put it in the garage or outside. And I wanted to show you, these are the hooks and they're pretty cool. You can hang them and you can hang your paper or ribbon to dry or whatever you're working on. I will put those also in the comments so you can see and order them if you're interested. But I really like them so far. We'll see how well they dry. So here we are the next day, but it's the same day for you guys. And I kind of wanted to show you how beautiful these can come out. Look at this. So my theory worked. I didn't have to dip the whole paper in. And this is from the other one. Whoop. The other side. So let's see how the other ones came out. Beautiful, huh? I love these.
and when you stack them up, it saves room, but it also gives you the option to have it on the other side a little bit darker. What I ended up doing is I did a little tracing paper too, because I like the sound of it. I don't know what that's from. I think it's from the bar on my drying rack. So I did some tracing paper as well. And then I did some regular paper too. This didn't come out as dark as it normally does, but it's still very pretty. So that'll be used in the journal. And then I also did, um, whoops, and I just ripped it, but that won't matter. Cause we can fix it when we add it to the journal. I did a doily and then then I did a thicker piece of tissue paper, um, paper too. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, this one. This one is vellum. It also gives another crunchy side to it. While these are drying, I'm going to have you take all of your pieces, including your pages, and distress them. I wanted to always try something. Not too bad. This makes it a little easier. Whoops. That doesn't matter though, because it blends right in. I want to see the difference. So let's use the pad. I don't really see too much of a difference, do you? And do both sides. So you want to do all that. Right now we're preparing our papers. And I like to do that. And you know what? It all depends. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't know what papers I'm using. And I just kind of go with the gamut and do my journal cover first. But this one... I decided to um, get the pages first and figure out what we're gonna do after. It just made more sense to me because we kind of knew what we were doing. Also, I wanted to tell you, I used two of these. I used two to hang my paper. So I wanna thank you guys. This is gonna be our first segment and hopefully you'll get all caught up for our part two of making a complete journal. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.